Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tio Studio and today I'm sharing with you my Stencil Girl Products Creative Team Project for September. Now Peg Robinson and I are a team when we do our creative team uh, for Stencil Girl Projects and this month the challenge was dress it or wear it and we decided that we wanted to dress it and Peg had a really cute wire um, dress form type shape something that you would use on a shelf and you could decorate it or dress it and so we decided we would do little dress form mannequins now I didn't have a wire one like she did and so I decided to create my own out of things that would normally be thrown away I'm using a Kleenex box a paper tube from the inside of paper towels and a soap bottle dish soap bottle to create my dress form mannequin uh, small small one that you set on a shelf this isn't like one that you could make where you it's your size and you can use it to uh, fit um, you know the clothes that you're sewing I'm not that good of a seamstress so I'm certainly not going to make a giant one but making a tiny one and dressing it using fabulous stencil girl stencils is a great idea so I've cut a hole in the box. I put the tube down inside of it and that is my base to hold up the dress form mannequin. And then now I'm uh, altering the bottle a little bit so that I can uh, use it as the top, the shoulders, the waist. Uh, if you guys haven't seen a dress form before, then I guess you're missing out. Uh, it's basically a tool that can be used for people who create clothing and this is just a tiny version of that a decorative version of that so I wanted something to fill the bottom of the bottle so I cut a piece of tag board out and made some little tabs so that I could glue it into the bottom of the bottle and uh, cut a hole in it so that it would hold my um, plastic bottle on there and you know be completely filled up I also made a little circle for the top to fill in the top where the screw top goes on the bottle and I filled in the bottom part of the, the Kleenex box as well so that everything is completely all one piece and um, it's all going to go together well now the, this particular bottle has this weird swooped area that's kind of in, in, indented where you would put your hands to hold the bottle when you're pouring out the soap. And I wanted that to look more ladylike. I wanted it to look like a female dress form, which is what they usually are. And so I decided to use some creative paper clay to fill in that swoop area and to create some breast shapes. And so I'm doing that just with creative paper clay and paper clay and uh, this is an air drying clay made out of paper pulp and I am putting it right on the bottle and um, on that right hand side is where I'm filling in some of that area that was kind of depressed or um, debossed if you want to say that would where your hand would go when you were pouring so this took me a minute or two I let this dry overnight um, but it stuck on there without any problem um, to the bottle I didn't have to do anything to the bottle or mess around with it at all um, the next thing I did was to cover the entire thing with paper mache so I got some Elmer's paste paper mache paste which is a powder it's gelatinous I mixed it with some water I mixed so much more than I needed I mean it is like ridiculous amounts I hope that it will stay nice in that ice cream bucket because I do have a lid then I just cut up some tissue and I I got it wet with the the paste the Elmer's paste and then I'm just completely covering every single inch of this thing um, forming it with my fingers and making sure that all of it is covered with paper mache so that it all looks like one piece of something that was created you don't even know that it you know it used to be a, a plastic bottle in a Kleenex box I did put a little bit of gesso on over the the label of the bottle because it was um, 
bright colored and I wanted everything to be all one color and I might have put just at one other place and I don't know if I did that after this layer is dry or before I, I can't remember at this point and we've gone too far in the video for me to really tell so I know that I did completely cover it with white tissue and then let it dry and then the next coat was uh, here's where I'm putting on some gesso I guess that was my first coat was the white tissue and then the second coat of paper mache is um, dress pattern tissue you know from from the inside of a pattern that you would purchase I guess I put gesso on after the the tissue was done I guess I might have put it on before might have put it on the label can't remember <laughs> I just know I didn't want that label to show through and it was kind of bright so um, the reason that I used pattern tissue for the top layer is because I think that that goes along with the theme of it being a dress form um, using a, a dress pattern I actually think this is a, a little boy's clothes pattern because I have a lot of those that I don't need anymore but um, it just gives the it, it goes along with the theme it gives the idea it also gives some interesting uh, shapes and lines to this kind of boring thing so you really could just you know put it up on your your shelf as it is but my idea is that I want to make it I want to make seasonal outfits for it to make a decoration that I could put different outfits on at different times and so that's that's my idea I hope that I do get around to actually doing it but as you can see here's the stages of um, how I made it so now for the fun part I'm going to do the stenciling so I have some some uh, kind of whitish off whitish fabric this is a cotton muslin and I have a whole bunch of it and I'm just I'm tearing up some pieces because I'm going to be doing the stenciling with stencil girl stencils and I have already pre-washed this fabric I want to make something that's permanent that if it gets dusty on the shelf I could actually wash it so I'm using some deco arts so soft fabric paint which is heat set uh, when dry so that it's it's permanent so this little dress that I made or that you will see me make will be able to go in the wash should it get dusty and I you know can use it the the next year for the same holiday year after year so Peg and I picked specific stencils that we wanted to use. This is our collaboration. We're making a similar project with the same stencils. That's how we're collaborating on this. So the stencils that you'll see me using, which are the same ones Peg used, are L435, uh, designed by Dennis. That's the kind of ancient um, Mayan sort of looking one. The July Club stencils, inspired by Rex Ray. The Klimt Forest, which is L358, and L543 ATC Mix-Up, designed by Mary Beth Shaw. Those are the stencils we're using this month. So I just want to make some fun, creative, um, bright, colorful fabric pieces. I have somewhat of an idea of what kind of design I'm going to do as far as, as my outfit for my little dress form and so I have these smaller pieces of fabric and I'm making a lot of different uh, custom design stenciled fabrics and because I'm using the fabric paint I will be able to heat set these with an iron uh, when I do that just a little tip I put up them between wax paper I put wax paper underneath I put wax paper over the top and that way if there is any bits that aren't quite dry or um, you know whatever I don't get anything on my iron my clothes iron but I do give them a really good uh, hot heat set um, without steam so that they are good and dry and set and I will be able to wash it at a future date and it won't wash out um, there's lots of types of fabric paints out there there's even ink pads for for uh, stamping on fabric and things I just think that this paint is really easy to use with stenciling. I'm also using some brushes that are designed to be makeup brushes. They were inexpensive on Amazon. And for when you're doing fabric, you want to make sure that you get quite a bit of paint on there so that it can soak into the fabric 
and get locked into the fibers. So these brushes work really well. I use them in kind of a pouncing motion. I don't do scraping or anything because that will cause the paint to go under the stencil. And it, it's not perfect. It's not completely clean, but I think it turns out cute. I'm using black, orange, purple, and white. And then in some cases, the background color shows through, which is sort of white. It's not 100% white, but um, I'm layering one color over another. These paints are fairly opaque, and I can even put the white over the top of the black, and it will show up as white over black, which I like. A lot of the fabric type products out there are too translucent to do that, but these particular So Soft paints from Deco Art Company work great for this. So here's that kind of a ancient Mayan looking stencil. I really love this stencil and you can tell because it's completely covered with paint <laughs> because I don't really clean them off. Um, you know, I could soak it and try to get all that stuff off, but why? I'm just going to use it again. There's no sense in doing that. Um, but it even looks cool, you know, going over itself. I'm using a Teflon sheet underneath just to keep the papers on my desk fairly clean. Um, this is where I start changing the entire color of the, the fabric. You know, it's nice that I don't have to get a bunch of different colors of fabric. I can just color it myself and it's not hard or, or um, you know, it's not a problem. It's just, that's why I think they call it so soft paint because it's pretty darn soft. Even when dry, it's not cr crunchy or anything. So I can put the color over the entire background and then stencil over the top. And I did that quite a bit as well. I just wanted a lot of variety. I wanted a lot of different patterns, a lot of choices to choose from for my little skirt that I did on my dress, which is kind of in panels. I didn't have a pattern for this. Um, I just winged it. I do that sometimes. I'm not a great seamstress by any means. So you'll not see the sewing part <laughs> or the, in some cases, unsewing parts. <laughs> this is not a, a channel about sewing. So that's a good thing because I'm not a pro, but I think it turned out cute. So here's where I'm showing you that I can stencil that the white right over the black. And it looks great. It's plenty opaque enough to do that. I can stencil the white over the purple. I can stencil the purple over the orange or the orange over the purple or the orange over the black. I just, I think it's great. It's fun. I love these little, um, that, that stencil is clamped trees, but I love the little, little grid like sections and interesting shapes at the bottom part there. I think it's really cool. Um, to just use that part. When you have a stencil, you don't have to use the whole stencil. You don't have to uh, use it even in the way that the designer intended. You can just take little pieces and parts of it that you think are interesting and make other shapes out of them. You can mix the stencils and put them on top of each other or switch them around and put them on top of themselves. This one also is interesting. This little ATC stencil has this one little section that's kind of like a line of boxes. And I think it looks cool over the top of the other section of the stencil that is just boxes. But they're different shapes. They're rectangles and stuff and they're not as uniform as the other ones. So I think it looks really cool to stack them on top of each other. So I made a lot of little pieces of fabric. Um, I even made more than this. This isn't all of them. But you can see there's all different patterns, all different colors combinations. However, they all are black, white, orange, and purple, which to me are Halloween colors. If that gives you a little bit of a hint of what I'm making, which holiday I'm doing. Um, I'm, I think I'm going to make an outfit for this after Halloween for Christmas or maybe a fall outfit or maybe a spring outfit or a summer outfit. It would look really cute as a summer fairy with wings or something like that. Hopefully I will do that. Hopefully I'll take the time to do it because I think it would be just a really cute decoration to have around for holidays. 
So now I'm in my designing process. I already had an idea in my head what I was going to do, but I need to make some pattern pieces. I measured the dress form mannequin just by putting a string around it and then holding that string up to my ruler to make sure that I am making my pattern pieces in the right sizes because um, I'm going to cut all the, the fabric into pieces and then I'm going to sew it. So I want to make little panels for the skirt and I've discovered that it is nine inches around the waist so I'm going to make nine one inch panels that that um, fan out at the bottom to two inches so that that's the first shape that I created then I laid the piece of paper over the top part and kind of figured out how big the, the top part of the dress will be in the back. So the back is just going to have a scoop neck and um, it's kind of like a vest. And then I'm going to make sleeves on it. So this is me making the right size sleeves. Those will be uh, puffy short sleeves that are gathered and then sewed on and then this is where I'm designing the front. I want to have um, as a place where I can uh, put cord in it like a corset. It's going to be a witchy dress so I want to have that zigzag crisscross thing in the front so that was something that I was thinking about as well. So there's all my pieces cut out and then I of course sewed all those little panel pieces at the bottom together and then I sewed the vest together and it ended up, ended up being a separate piece. Um, I was actually going to sew it all together, but then I realized I don't know how I'm going to put it on because I didn't leave any place for anything to, to be open or, you know, a zipper or Velcro or anything. So I ended up making the skirt part with some elastic and then I put a little lace trim at the bottom and then this is the top part. It's kind of like a jacket but then it has this overlap section in the middle that will cover when I do the lace part. So now I'm putting some eyelets on. These are mini eyelets that you use for paper and I put four on each side and then I'm using some black hemp cord to lace it up and this helps me um, cinch it up to fit over the lady parts and also to give that that corset crisscross look on the front of the outfit. So that's how I completed it. Then I thought, you know what, in order to this for this to really look like a witchy outfit, it needs a hat. And so I got out a couple dies and made the brim of a hat, um, circle dies, and then I'm using black cardstock. And then I also made a piece where I curved it around into a cone shape and um, so that it would fit inside there as a cone inside the center of my hat to make a witch hat. And then I got out that same ATC mix-up stencil. This one little section down at the bottom is the same part that I used on the sleeves and I think it kind of looks like spider webs. It's not quite as uniform as spider webs are but it could be a spider webby pattern. So this I'm just using it as a print. I put some gesso right on the stencil and then I lay the, the cardstock over the top and just get a white print on the witch hat paper. Then all I'm doing is sticking the cone together uh, with some double-sided very strong tape and then I'm going to hot glue that in with some cord around so that it stays together and then I put some uh, lacy stuff and some some other little bits and bobs and pieces uh, orange feather uh, different things to decorate the hat so that is it for this project I hope you've enjoyed it if you have please give it a thumbs up leave me a comment or question below subscribe if you haven't already and share this if you would like to also the link to the blog post in also, the, the link to Peg's video will be down below the video. Bye-bye.